Okay, so for this problem, you have three charges. Um, so here's the 65, was it microcoulomb? Let me double check. Yeah, 65 microcoulomb. And then you have this uh, plus 48 microcoulomb. And then over here, you have this negative uh, 95 microcoulomb charge. And then you know that these are separated by, ooh, that was an arc. Let's try to do a line almost. And OK, anyway, you know the separation is 0.35. And I'm just going to double check all these numbers. Yes, 0.35. And then this is also R. And then the goal is to get the force on each charge due to the other two. Um, so this is an application of Coulomb's law and the superposition of um, forces. Um, and so the force for between any two charges is given by Coulomb's law. And I'm just going to work in magnitudes and then just talk about directions in a second. Um, it's this 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught um, times some Q1, and I'll just do magnitudes again, times the magnitude of Q2 divided by R squared. And then it's, of course, um, attractive if they're opposite signs and then repulsive if they're, they're the same sign. So let's think about the charge at the point, the 65 microcoulomb charge. So I'm just gonna, just so I can like double check the answer because I actually got it wrong a couple times before just sorting out the signs and stuff. So you wanna make sure your answer of course makes sense. So the 65 microcoulomb charge is gonna feel a repulsive force from the 48. So it'll have this one and I'll call that F48. And then it's gonna feel an attractive force from the 95 that's, I'm guessing it's gonna be like smaller, but similar magnitude because this is a bigger charge, but a bigger distance. And then the distance kind of counts more because it's just one of our R squared factor. Um, but whatever, this is just for drawing the picture. So then um, we want to just take the positive version. So here's the net, the net force. And then we want to do the force on from 95 minus the force on 48, assuming that this way is positive and that way is negative. Uh, so then we can say F65. Um, is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times, um, <clears throat> oh, and then so, so its charge is, uh, so I'll call this Q, um, let me make sure I use the same notation. So this one's Q1, this is Q2, and I'm going to call this Q3, just so I don't have to write out these numbers um, a bunch. And so um, I think that's one way to avoid errors is to use symbols because it's kind of it's harder to transcribe big numbers than it is to transcribe symbols as you're going through your derivation. OK, and so then there's going to be this force from Q2 divided by this R squared and the R is 0.35. Um, oh, yeah, and we said this was negative and because it's to the left, that's this one. And then um, the same, the positive force is to the right. So that's plus, oh yeah, I'm just going to work in magnitudes here. I always try to work in magnitudes with the, with the charges again and just kind of put in the signs by hand just to make sure it's like all making intuitive sense. Okay, and then this one's at a distance of 2r squared. <clears throat> so when I plugged all this into a calculator, I think I have all the variables defined, um, I got negative 12. So I kind of, as I predicted, the left side won out. Um, but, oh, sorry, not 12. Haha, <laughs> minus 120. Humans. Um, yeah. And so we're going to do the same thing for the other two. So, um, so for the middle charge, it is feeling... Um, a, rep a repulsive force from the 0.65 because we're both positive. So here's 
the force from um, 65. And then um, the it's a feeling an attractive force from the nine is 95. So it's also in that direction. Um, it's gonna be a little bit bigger cause it's a bigger charge. So that's force nine five. And so then we need to just add these. So we can say F on 65 is equal to Q2 over four pi epsilon naught. And then these are both the same distance. So I can factor out this R squared because they're both at, at a distance of R. Q2 is a distance of R from Q3 and Q1. So then that's just gonna be Q1 plus Q3. And then when I plug that into a calculator, I got 560. So it makes sense that it's bigger than the other one because the, for the forces aren't opposing each other. Um, and <laughs> finally for F3, so this one's negative. So um, just I'll keep that in mind. So it's feeling an attractive force from Q1 and then also an attractive force from Q2. The Q1 one I think is gonna be a lot weaker because it's twice as far. So here is F um, 65, so from the 65 microcoulomb charge and then um, a bigger one from the 48, even though it's a smaller charge, the distance matters more. So something like that, relative size. But I like to just do accurately draw the pictures um, to my best abilities, because like, I mean, you never know when you're doing a calculation, right? I mean, you never, unless you're measuring things, you don't really know if you did it right or not. So just building in as many checks into your style um, as possible, uh, I think makes a lot of sense. Okay, so F95 is gonna be, oh yeah, sorry, these are all like magnitudes again, because like I was saying, I, I really like to consciously think about the signs and I don't really like to rely on the math working out uh, with these electric fields and electric forces. Okay, now these are different distances, so negative q1 that one's um 2r away so 2r squared and then this one's also to the left so it's negative uh q2 over r squared so i feel like i get something like this and i think indeed i uh, do so negative 450 newtons in magnitude at least did I really get four fifty? Yeah, and then let me just double check. I think I used to, yeah, there's only two sig figs, so that was appropriate. Okay, great.